The Anunnaki live on the planet Nibiru, which orbits our system. They are an ancient race of extremely developed and powerful beings and can be considered gods in human eyes. But even the great Anunnaki suffered from the terrible environmental conditions on their planet. A large crack had formed in Nibiru's ozone layer. This crack widened every decade, increasing global warming and destroying crops and animal life. The Anunnaki discovered that pouring gold dust particles into the atmosphere slowed down the expansion of the crack, even reversing it slightly. But Nibiru was a mineral-poor planet, and gold was extremely scarce. The lack of food quickly led to revolt among the population. Groups of rebels challenged the central government of Nibiru, and a chaotic wave was about to sweep through every city on the planet. The rebels were led by Alalu, who, despite being part of Nibiru's noble lineage, did not have a good relationship with his parents. Trying to execute a coup d'etat, Alalu attacked and killed the king of Nibiru, demanding the throne for himself. However, there was an heir by right of lineage, Prince Anu. A public duel was organized to decide the new ruler of Nibiru. Anu and Alalu fought unarmed, and after a fierce fight, Anu was chosen as the new king of Nibiru. Alalu was judged for his actions, but before the sentence was handed down, he managed to steal a ship and escape from Nibiru. King Anu decided that exile was punishment enough for Alalu and decided to commit his efforts to saving his planet. Anu realized that the only viable solution would be to find the precious gold on other celestial bodies. Many space expeditions were made to the planets closest to Nibiru, but the results were dismal as gold veins were scarce. When hope was almost nil, a massive breakthrough was made. On the third closest planet to the sun, a true paradise had been found. Most of the planet was covered with water, with large portions of land that harbored a huge diversity of animal and plant life. Even more important to the Anunnaki, there were many ores waiting to be exploited, including precious gold. To the amazement of Nibiru's entire royal court, the person responsible for the discovery was the exiled Alalu. As a result of his vital contribution, he was pardoned for his crimes. The Anunnaki dubbed the planet Kai, but it was later known as Planet Earth. The Anunnaki chose a region, now known as Mesopotamia, to build a wonderful city called Eridu. King Anu's eldest son, named Enki, was in charge of the metropolis, while his father continued as ruler of the planet Nibiru. After seven days of hard work, the Anunnaki completed the construction of Eridu. They began the processes of extracting gold, which, after being collected in considerable quantities, was sent to Nibiru. Extracting gold was an arduous and painful process. Therefore, the Anunnaki decided to resort to forced labor from an alien race called the Ijiji, who had long before been defeated in battle and dominated by the Anunnaki. After hundreds of years, the planet Nibiru was practically re-established on account of the massive amounts of gold mined from Earth. But the Ijiji could no longer stand suffering in the gold mines and organized a full-scale rebellion. A great war inevitably occurred between the Anunnaki and the Ajiji. The city of Eridu was badly damaged, and many gold mines collapsed. Despite their courage and determination, the Ajiji were no match for the Anunnaki in strength and technology. They were quickly subdued. But the Anunnaki realized that the Ajiji had already done much to restore Nibiru, and forcing them to work would only result in new rebellions. A new solution had to be created. The Anunnaki decided to create a new race of living beings, capable of working and learning, but inferior to the Ajiji in strength and size. To do this, the Anunnaki used the womb of a female primate that inhabited the forests, and using advanced technology, inseminated her with the Anunnaki's essence. But the results were grotesque, giving rise to terrifying monsters, such as cyclops, gorgons, and two-headed giants. The method of conception had failed. The other alternative was to use the essence of a male primate, and after modifying its DNA, to inseminate it into the womb of an Anunnaki woman. After a few months of waiting, the first baby was born, who was given the name Adamu. His skin was tanned with a reddish tint. Although he was much smaller than the Anunnaki babies, 
Adamu was just like his creators. It was the birth of the first human being. The Anunnaki also conceived a woman named Hiva to fulfill the requirements necessary for human procreation. Centuries after the birth of Adamu and Hiva, humans represented a sizable population in the city of Eridu. The Anunnaki were pleased with the development of the humans, who soon became able to mine gold, build houses, and even plant and harvest crops. As a reward for their efforts, the humans were allowed to frequent the Eden, a sacred garden created by the Anunnaki. The beauty of human women started to attract some Anunnaki, but the relationship between the two races was strictly forbidden. But Enki himself, king of the city of Eridu, eventually fell in love with a human woman. From this relationship, the boy Adapa was born. He became a very talented and wise man, for he was the direct son of a noble Anunnaki. Adapa also had a longer life than most humans, but he was not immortal. Adapa married a woman named Atiti, and they gave birth to a new line of humans who were more intelligent than the previous generation. But Adapa's children also inherited the Anunnaki's lust for gold and desire for power. This gave rise to violent behavior among the humans. Adapa's two oldest sons, named Cain and Abel, were the closest servants of the Anunnaki and competed with each other to see who their masters could please the most. Tired of standing behind his brother Abel, Cain waited until they were alone. Using a wooden club, he murdered his brother. Never before had a human killed another, which was a surprise to the Anunnaki. As punishment, Cain had his forehead marked with a symbol pointing to him as a murderer and was exiled from Eridu. He was condemned to live forever in the world without ever finding peace for his soul. There were other similar cases later. Against the Anunnaki's orders, humans began to procreate excessively. Eridu quickly became unable to provide shelter for so many people, and food sources were scarce in Eden's garden. As the planet Nibiru was recovered, mining gold in large quantities was no longer necessary. The Anunnaki decided to expel the humans from their sacred city and garden condemning them to live in the fields and forests. 